Today's debunk is going to be on an old theory, but in a new light. As it appears, I'm not the only one who thinks the traditional Pixar theory has gone a bit convoluted. Enter Alex Bale, a true visionary here on YouTube, much like yours truly. Alex has made a name for himself on a platform with his fantastic filmmaking and theorist work, both of which beautifully come together to form his magnum opus of Spongebob Theory ARG, which I cannot recommend to you enough. This beautiful, multi-layered story perfectly represents all the fears YouTubers have, trying to make content on the stuff you love, but also not being slave to the algorithm, all while centering around the antics of a plucky yellow sponge. Just but we're not actually going to cover any of those theories today. As mentioned before, today we'll be covering Alex's very own Pixar Metaverse theory. When Pixar was first starting out, they used to include these little bonus segments during the end credits of their movies. These were bloopers where they would re-show scenes from the movie, but the characters would suddenly forget their lines or mess up and break character. It's something you'd expect from a live-action movie with real actors, but these are obviously animated movies with fake computer-generated characters and environments. Whoa, whoa, Alex, slow down, so are you telling me? Bugs. We are looking at a universe where talking bugs are making movies about talking bugs with tiny cameras and tiny film equipment, and they're not alone. Now obviously, these are not canon, they're just funny gags where we get to pretend like the characters are real actors on a real set. Then why did the creators go out of their way to make the crew filming A Bug's Life also bugs? I don't know, to get in on the joke. You said yourself, these are just funny blooper gags that can be found in any animated movie. 1527 take one. That's as close as I can get right now. I'm on a seafood diet. I eat, I see seafood? Never mind. <laughs> God. At the end of the day, these are still just little bonus segments that exist in their own separate continuities. It's not actually canon to the real Pixar universe that we care about. Exactly. Now, if there are no further questions, like and subscribe below, yada yada yada. Now, if you excuse me, lunch is calling my name. But unlike the Pixar universe, these bloopers actually feature, for the very first time ever, concrete connections between these films. But... Lunch. I have a sandwich. Woody shows up as a crew member on A Bug's Life. The bugs show up in Toy Story 2, and Rex shows up in the Monsters, Inc. bloopers. And also, take a look at this. In Iceland, there's absolutely no ice. It's all green. But meanwhile, if we turn our attention to Greenland, there's nothing but ice. Guys, I think we're finally through the looking glass. I just want to clarify that when I talk about Pixar Studios from now on, I'm referring to the fictional in-universe Pixar Studios that is implied to exist in this metaverse. I am not trying to make any claims about the real-life Disney Pixar Studios. I am strictly theorizing about fictional- now I know what many of you Pixar fan aficionados must be asking yourselves. How can these bloopers tie in the rest of the Pixar universe when there hasn't even been a new Pixar blooper since Monsters, Inc.? So yeah, humans and talking toys and bugs and monsters all peacefully coexist in this world. And even though we never see it, I think there's a good chance that talking rats and fish and maybe even superheroes all exist in the same world and everyone knows about it and it's not a big deal. In this metaverse, I don't see why there can't also be talking cars and robots and even straight up magical creatures just walking the streets. What? No, 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 no. Can't just say just because some of these IPs cross over, that means all these IPs coexist without substantial evidence that's the lazy man's way out <sighs> now if there are no further interruptions where was i but then right when i was about to record this video i felt a little itch in the back of my head the same itch you get when you look at bad mocap animation or an unlicensed knockoff of a popular character the kind of itch that tells you there's something off here never mind and then one day i finally realized what it was that was bothering me so much it was this one single clip from the Bugs Life bloopers. Marker. Oh, oh wait, stop. I think I swallowed a bug. I think I swallowed a bug. Wait a second. How, how if if he's a if he swallowed a bug, but but he's a bug. What? So basically, the theory suggests here that the entire metaverse runs on Who Framed Roger Rabbit rules, where the cartoon characters are just that, cartoon characters who also double as actors, with varying levels of self-awareness, apparently. I mean, I didn't really do anything. I mean, they, they paid me a fee to use elements of my life story. My name is Flick, and I guess you could say I'm the hero of the picture. This is a set for Andy's room. It's where all us toys live in the movie. I'm not in the movie. It's a cartoon. 
Do I look like a cartoon to you? Now, there isn't really a problem with this point of theory until we get to the Oscars. These award-winning animated movies won many different awards for their movies. But sometimes during the Oscars, guess who presents these awards? Wow, the Academy Awards. That's right. Characters from Toy Story, A Bug's Life, Monsters, Inc., The Incredibles, Cars, and Even Up have all made physical appearances at the Oscars. Oh, come on. These are just cute little gags for, for the Oscars. Oscars. They, they don't, don't count. count. But why not? Why? Why? Well, it's very simple, actually, because these gags are not meant to be canon to Pixar. Nor are they the only animation studio known for doing this. I mean, if we had to include these at evidence, then that means we have to include Shrek into the metaverse, and I was joking! Yes, I am now claiming every single non-Pixar character that shows up alongside the Pixar characters at these awards is now officially a part of the same metaverse. This is no longer the Pixar metaverse theory. Th this is now just straight up the animated movie metaverse theory it's all canon they're all connected <laughs> what on earth is the actual theory here why has all your evidence just amounted to more and more bizarre crossovers and why can i just eat my sandwich already alex well First off, I'm still gonna mostly just focus on the Pixar characters, but more importantly, we are finally done searching for new evidence, and we are ready to start the theory that I've been building up to for this entire video. <clears throat> Hi, we're here to present the award for Best Animated Short Film, because we are animated, and we are short. For the first time ever, Flick refers to the Bugs Life characters as animated. So here is the actual theory I've been building up to for this entire video. Finally! Just like in real life, all the characters were created by Pixar to star in their movies, but in the metaverse, Pixar actually somehow physically brought them to life. First off, how does Slim swallow a tiny bug if he's supposed to be a bug? I think I swallowed a bug. Well, he's not. He's a magical, animated representation of a bug. This also explains why the toy actors need to eat. I had that bean burrito for lunch. Sure, they actually look like them on the outside, but they probably have internal organs and all the same basic needs as any living thing. Okay. But what about the biggest contradiction in the entire metaverse? The one I've been avoiding talking about. I'm of course referring to The Incredibles interviews. He's lying. They're all clearly animated characters when compared to the real human interviewers in the room. And the reason they're lying about this is because they're ashamed of the way they were portrayed in the movie. They were ashamed to be in the movie. The Incredibles, Pixar's magnum opus. They were ashamed to be in that movie. Are there any other moving parts of the theory we should be aware of? The real reason I am making this theory is to answer a single question. What is the relationship between these living animations and their creators? That's it, I'm not even gonna touch this last point. This theory is definitely more believable than the actual Pixar theory. Like the fact that Alex emphasizes this was not an actual attack on Pixar. This truly feels like it was just a theory for a sake of a theory and not some headcanon. And now we can finally wrap this up. Oh, no, no. Theory, you're bonked. Oh, yes. Oh, yes.